So we finished Psalm 127 last week, um, the first of our two psalms that focused on family life, right? We've been talking about family life. And we laid the foundation of our home with Jesus, right? That's how we start building our family. And then what did we received last week, the walls. Who are the walls? Kids, yeah. God gives us children to build our, on our foundation. They're also arrows. <laughs> They're arrows, right. There are reward, there are arrows, and there are gift. Keep our or, quiver full. Keep our quiver full, right. That's right. Um, <laughs> and we were given the assignment of raising our walls in godly training, right? And that way we secure them to the foundation of, of Jesus. That's what makes our walls stand, right, on our house that we're building. And we were also talking about how their arrows, and we're supposed to aim them at our target, God's target out in the world. Get them the right direction, send them the right direction where God wants them to go. So, um, and we all, I also mentioned, I think, that by building our, our foundation and our walls, our family on God as the center, that that would help our cities, our nation, our world, right? Because we're building strong families, godly families, that's what will help us. So today we're going to start. Mm -hmm. A good example of that is was our earthquake. They brought houses in and made little tiny pylons underneath them, uh -huh. and those are the houses that fell. Right. And the ones that they put a solid foundation under Stood. and strapped it to it. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that were okay. Yeah. I would say brought in, brought in the oil oil field housing. Yeah, because yeah. there were like three different oil fields. Right, and they brought them all inward into the but city. But they didn't put them on their foundation. They just put them on those pillars, right? Yeah, those little tiny things that didn't work. Not stable enough. So today we're going to start in Psalm 128, and we'll read verses 1 and 2. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. So the context of these verses is still the family, and specifically the children God gives. That's where we're starting. That's why these two psalms kind of naturally go together. They're, they're paired together. So the progression is going to continue as we work through this psalm. And it's important about how we direct our little arrows, right? We are to direct our arrows, or our children, in the fear of the Lord and walking in his ways. She's reading other notes, huh? Okay. So you know, did you notice what the end result was in that verse? What? Well, no, in the verse itself. Oh, okay. What was the result? You remember what it said? You got it, Claudia? You got all of it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I do. Okay. We will be blessed, is what it was telling us if we did that. We will be happy, and it will be well with us. When your children are, are raised to fear the Lord like you, you're going to have a better life, usually. Because most of the time, even if they wander away for a while, Majority of the time they come back to, to the Lord. So verse 2 also tells us that when you eat the labor of your hands, and it's kind of switching form, you know, we were talking about the house, right? But now it's talking about almost a farming um, symbolism here. So our investment in training our children in God's ways will bring back dividends is what we're going to find out. Like farming does. You plant the seed. What comes up, the plant, what happens, you get fruit or whatever your crop is. So investing and training your kids right is going to pay back. It's going to be a benefit to you. That's how you end up being blessed and happy because you invested in your kids. So all these blessings are available to everyone who will honor and respect God. We all have the same opportunity when we're raising kids or helping kids. 
or just even living our own life when we're fearing the Lord and honoring Him. So the fearing of the Lord in verse 1 was demonstrated by the word walking in His ways. It is not enough to know the word, but a matter of but a matter of life, of a life of obedience. So you can't just memorize a Bible verse, memorize a whole chapter, memorize a book. That's not what's going to do it for you. It's actually obeying what you're learning, right? You can't just know the word. You got to keep doing it. And that's what that's what walking in His ways means. So Charles Spurgeon. One of those good old past preacher types, he's from the 1800s, he was a British Baptist preacher. He said, it is idle to talk of fearing the Lord if we act like those who have no care. So if we're acting like the world, right? Whether it be no God or uh, be a God or no, God's ways will be our ways if we have a sincere reverence for him. If the heart is joined unto God, the feet will follow hard after him. So it should be natural that if we truly love God, we should be following Him and obeying Him, walking in His ways. That's what fearing means, fearing of the Lord. So just think about, you know, for those of us who have experienced love, what was it like when you first fell in love? You, you were excited to be with them, spend time with them, right? And, and learn about them. That's the same way it is with God. If we're truly in love with God, we're going to want to be with Him. It's kind of like the message yesterday. We're talking about the presence of God, right? You should want to be in the presence of God. It should be something special and important to you. You should be making that time to be with Him. It's, it's the same with our relationships with, with boyfriends and husbands. We want to be with them because we love them. So it's the same with God, right? So let's read a little bit further in Psalm 128.3. Your wife shall be a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. So this psalmist had in mind, he's talking about a hard-working farmer now, basically. He's now sitting at the dinner table enjoying his food, the fruit of his work, right? It says, your, fruit, your wife shall be a fruitful vine. The one who fears the Lord may be blessed with a large, happy home. So I'm going to get into a little subject. Maybe you haven't thought of this before. Just my ponderings based on some of the scriptures I've been reading. So I don't want you to be scared. <laughs> just, don't use, just don't use that thought in a commencement exercise or you'll get kicked off the team. <laughs> you see what that, he talked about how great it was, his wife? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah that was terrible. Kick him off the team. Yeah, that was well, the newspaper is. The, the, terrible. But it was interesting timing. I'm writing these this lesson and coming upon this particular subject that I'm going to talk about that maybe you haven't thought about before, but I'm, I've been watching a lot of old westerns with my dad. It's, uh, that or football. <laughs> but we're watching them from every decade, right? Some, some, some movies I'm not, some of the modern ones I'm not that hep on. I like the older ones. But anyway, it's interesting. I've watched several movies right while I was writing this study over the last few weeks, and they were from different decades, different time periods the stories were written and the movies were made. But they had a, a, a common theme which was interesting inside the movie. Either the families had a large, like the main couple or whatever in the movie, had large family and still wanted more children. Or maybe they were just beginning their family, but they wanted a large family. But the theme was large family, even if they had five kids already, they wanted more and they felt it was a blessing to have more kids. And it got me thinking, because I'm doing this, this particular lesson at the same time, that you, you used to see that much more frequently, uh, an emphasis on a good large family, right? You know, back in our younger days and before, you don't see that so much anymore, right? And. Um, <laughs> Our, our modern society has gotten away from it, especially in the European or American, the more Western civilizations. We are not emphasizing large families anymore. We're emphasizing small families. Some of it's because of economy. Some of it's because there's a bunch of people that want population control, you know, because they're afraid we're going to run out of food or whatever their thinking is. Um, 
other people decide not to have large families anymore because they can't afford the rent or they can't afford the college for the kids in the future. They don't want to even think about having more than one or two kids because they think it's a, a burden or a problem. And they're not thinking about children as a blessing anymore. They're not thinking about having a large family anymore. Because they're trying to give them too much. Well, yeah, that's true. And we live much differently yes, than different even from when I was a kid, right? Quite, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's different. But, and, but reading this scripture and reading some others in the Bible, it would appear God's original intention was for his children to have large families, that we would be blessed with children, that it was important to him, that he saw that as a blessing to us to have more than one kid, that we should want more than one kid. Um, <laughs> now, I'm the way. In the world this is just some of my weird thinking what do you see in the world what do the non-christian nations or even the cults the religious cults of the world what do they emphasize yeah. lots of kids right mm -hmm. but the but the christian nations or the christian families are going just the opposite direction so what does that accomplish in this world what is something that comes to your mind Exactly, yeah. exactly, and yet God wanted us to, to have lots of kids to, to spread his, his, his lifestyle, right? His, spread him in the world. Um, so to me, I can see this as just another one of the, the devil's subtle tricks in this world on us to get us, and, and it's in some ways a selfish way because we think oh, it's going to be easier for us if we have less kids, right? But if you can get the people who are lost, the people who don't love God to have more kids, they're progressing the devil's agenda in the world, right? There's more of them, like you're saying, than there are of us. More, less of God's people. So what happens to the world? It starts to fall apart even faster because there's not all the Christian base out there to keep his word going. So um, not only we, uh, uh, well, let me, I'll just say this. When lost people have more children and Christians have less, the world becomes filled with more and more of ungodly and their ways. We're, we're kind of helping the devil out when we took on this thinking of, okay, I'm going to limit my amount of kids I have because I need to, you know, provide for them and whatever our thinking may be. If, we're the, if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. And there's less of us. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's less um, influence, or uh, I mean, God's in control, control everything. Right. But He has less people to carry out His His work. work. Yeah. His yeah. Work. Yeah. It's it's let the the devil's having more opportunity to spread His work, and we're having less opportunity yeah. to spread ours. And it seems to that. But the more of them is how we're we're losing God in schools and we're losing you know right. in the government the way right. it's because you know there's so many of them they all voted in right that's exactly right yeah, I thought of that yeah and I didn't want to scare you all with that but you know but it, but it does I mean they're, they're they don't have to be lost forever. No. You hope, but it doesn't always work that way. I just, I just, uh, we're, we're, we're depleting God's army, you know, here on earth because we've chosen this path of what may be easier, you know, less kids. Yes, he can. He can. You, know, you can't take God out of the equation. He can do what he wants. But it, this is just some of my ponderings. I'm thinking about this because in the Bible you, you see in many places, not just even in this passage, an emphasis on a large a family, the blessings of a large family. So it's just something I was thinking about. And I just thought it was so funny I come across these movies that are teaching the same kind of concept. And that's an old concept that used to exist that is gone from our society. I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah. no, 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 no,
idea of having a large family is that you can have a farm and you can do all that stuff because you've got all the people to work it. But right. Yes. Kids well, don't work it now. Mm -hmm. Kids don't. Well, work but that's it. us too. I know too. I know that's us too. Stop. Starts with the parents. Oh, I agree. And you know, I was talking to Tim the other day, and he was talking about societies making it so much easier for kids not to be productive. Because oh, yeah. just one example he talked about is you know when they were young. They had to be off of my insurance by the time they were like 21. Or oh, right. Now it's 26 or something. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Like they have, kids don't have to be independent because nope. they'll just, they can stay on, you know, parents' insurances and stuff like that for longer and right. longer and longer. And as long as they don't have to be productive, mm -hmm. they're not going to be. Right. It's, we've gotten lax in so many areas. You know, you might girls can have a job at 16. If you Mine want to too. drive, you're going to pay the insurance. Yeah, mine too. And, and now, like, being in high school and having kids that are that, they can't get a job until they're 18. Lots of places aren't hiring until they're hiring now. Really? Yes. And, you know, 16, I, I worked at 14 at the rec department. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 16. They're not hiring them until they're 18? Well, Lots of places don't home job. Because of the way they behave? No, because of, um, like, Here's the heavy equipment that they have to work with. Oh. Or like units won't hire until they're 18 because of the industrial um, mixers. mixers they use. What? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Betty's Betty's home. Home. yeah, they won't you have to be. How many team. kids used to work as apprentices oh, for their right, families, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, in a bakery or whatever? I worked at every one of my family pretty much worked at Betty's. Um, yeah. You can learn it. Much. There's plenty uh, of kids that can like, learn it. That's where we're at. Like, that's. So trying to teach the kids how to be productive or yeah. anything like that, it doesn't even start until they're 18. Okay, so not only have we become lax in verbally spreading the gospel, good news, we're not, most, a lot of Christians don't even spread the good news anymore. And teaching God's ways, we've gotten afraid to tell the truth in many churches. We've also decreased God's army in this world by not wanting more children. That's just my... So for those of you that are still able to have children in this room, get to work. Come on now, chop chop. Chop 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 chop. I'm gonna give it straight from God's mouth. Ready? No. Have we got all the blanks filled in? Because I want to make sure you get this thought. What did God originally command man to do? He said, then wow. God blessed them, and God yeah. said to them, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> be that vine, right? Be fruitful and multiply. And why did, why did the Pharaoh want to get, get rid of, get concerned about it? Because they were having too many babies. That's right. Them Hebrews. <laughs> <laughs> they quit brewing coffee and went yeah. to have That's yeah. right. Same Yeah. <laughs> See, I was going to say, you're talking about me, me having two kids, right, Linda? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm thinking, you know, my husband, he wanted four or five, whatever, right? After two, I said, that's enough. <laughs> I said, I've had one boy, one girl, I'm good. You know, I went through labor twice. <laughs> And back then, we didn't have, we had natural childbirth. We didn't that's right. Girls. That's right. None of that stuff. But anyway. None of that stuff. So, but I think about, you know, I, for my own reason, I'm thinking, I, I've had enough. I had a boy and a girl, and, and we're living on limited income. I, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, supplying for my kids, then maybe I shouldn't have any more kids, right? So, I, I wonder, you know, did I cheat myself of added blessings, because in a way, maybe I told God no, because I decided two was enough, <laughs> Very best, right, I had good kids, and I was, I've been very blessed, but maybe I cheated myself out of a blessing because I said no. You know, and that's... You said I, no, or... Not like out and out no, but I'm saying because I had the attitude, I've got enough. Oh, I've got to take care of these two. It's an attitude. I'm not... I'm taking God out of the I equation. It's different. I think it's... If you know you're supposed to have more kids, God told you to have more kids... Right, and I don't. I can't say that. Yeah. I just say, did I because I didn't have, you know, I didn't think about it per se. Did I like not go for the large family, you know? 
so just a weird thought, you know, I don't know. But I do know, you know, God's the one that gives the children. He's the one that allows. But he also doesn't give things when we say no. So how many of us have maybe said no when we shouldn't have? I don't know. So Lily, it's all up to you to save mankind. <laughs> when it's time, when it's, when it's time, Lily, you have to have a large family. Your mom, she wants 10 grandbabies. Oh, Lord. And, and she wants them to come in sets of at least twins, maybe triplets. <laughs> but anyway. My brother really was 18. Oh, of course, he took six back. But you know, like, you know. Fairly soon. Right. Big families, a lot of times they pass away. They yeah. Make it. Right. Yeah. Well, especially a long time ago. Yeah. But. You know, for like with me and, and maybe with a lot of people, it's always a matter of control. We want to control everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we take God out of the equation and say, you know, okay, I'm trying to control my income, my, what I'm giving my kids, what their future is going to be. But maybe I am taking control of something I shouldn't have. But I'm not saying that I was wrong. I'm just saying, you yeah. think about it. Did I, did I stop something that maybe I should have? kept having kids and made Terry happy having four or five kids now running around. But now, yeah, yeah, now we got grandchildren. Yeah, and, grandchildren. Yeah. But anyway. Such and her kids are doing their jobs. Right? right. They have lots of kids. <laughs> Jake wants five children. There you so. go. Wow. There you go. He wants, they let her have four more. He wants five kids. We have to yeah. let him read this song. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Courage him on. Yeah, see, I can sit in a home class. Tuesday in Europe because I have to have a plan for this baby that is turning three soon. So I went to this house and there's this young lady, uh, very pretty, like like Indian type. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, I told her that I need to get some information. I asked her, well, at the house is mom and who else? And I asked if she said, I know that. And tell me who is living here. And he said, well, there's a boy. I don't need the names. I just need the gender and the ages. Mm -hmm. A boy, how old is he? 18. And then there's a boy. Um, how old is he? 16. And then there's a boy. Uh, how old is he? 14. And then she continued. She has nine. Oh, <laughs> but they're not there, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, at that time, they, they were, were out. <laughs> yeah. And I got this little girl that is turning three that she came to me and we were playing. And then I asked her, and what are you working at? And she said, I'm not working. Who could yeah, with nine is. kids? Oh, yeah, she is. She's working. <laughs> yeah. I visited again to continue um, playing with the girl. And she was kind of pushing me out of the house because they were going to get food. Oh. At the center that they, um, every Tuesday they give food away to all the people. Mm -hmm. And then she said, it's great. I have everything that I need. Oh. I don't have to work. Oh, oh wow. She's Good. really happy. And I said, oh my God, we're nine and no dad and no work. She's blessed. I will be like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Right. But she's not. She's got the right attitude. So relaxed. And the girl was pretty clean and nice clothes. So, yeah. And the house was clean and nice. So God's taking care of her. Said, wow, this is crazy. Like so Lily, nine. Mm -hmm. Nine is doable. That's better than ten. Yeah. <laughs> we know you can do nine now. You have a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lily. <laughs> It's, that's right. Yeah. We're just uh, helping you with your future. <laughs> so let's uh, read verses 2 and 3 again. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall, shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. So this is a really nice picture. Image of the father sitting there eating, looking around. He's blessed by what he's seeing, his family. But it's interesting because the first verse in two, it, it talks about the wife being a vine. And then in verse three, 
it switch. Well, I guess it's the first three. It says that she's like a vine, and then um, it switches to your children are like olive plants. We go from a vine to an olive plant. Two different, you know, yeah. things, right? But it's trying to create a picture that our children, like baby plants, are supposed to be independent from the plant from which their seed was produced. So she was fruitful. She bared the fruit, right? She's the vine. But the kids are supposed to be like individual plants. You're supposed to raise them up to be independent. You know, far too much nowadays we're seeing kids baby clear past college. <laughs> you know, their parents are giving them everything under the sun. Like uh, Connie was saying, you know, or let's say a couple of you guys probably said it, you know, where your kids got to be out, out of the house taking care of themselves, able to, to manage on their own, but now we're just catering to them all the way up, making it easy for them to stay at home, not grow, go out and be that independent, independent plant, you know? Yeah. So that's something that maybe we can help with, encouraging parents that we know, help them, inspire them to get their kids to be independent. Don't baby them so much, teach them some responsibilities. You know, they need to, they need to grow up not be clinging onto the vine anymore. They need to be their own plant, right? You're out, Carolyn. Get out. Aren't you out? Aren't you two out? Finally. Finally. Uh, all these years. Yeah, it's been hard. I've had to push her out. I don't know how many times. <laughs> Mama, scared. Mama birds had to drop that baby out of the nest. Anyway. <laughs> Daddy wanted you to stay though. Anyway, you want to you want to raise your children to to stand on their own two feet, yeah. and I don't see a lot of that going on these days. A lot of, too much babying. Got to make them stand on. That's why my heart just swells with pride when I see Emma will be twenty right. next month. And she's like, "Daddy, I'm gonna be twenty one next month." Right. Next month, and she's already, you know, she's moving. She's going to school. She has two jobs already. That's amazing. She's a little go-getter. Been doing, she's been doing well. But she's got the work ethic. She's able she to do me, it. She said, I can survive on my full time job, but my little in and out part time job gives me that little extra money so I don't have to fret. Right. Over it. She's yeah. always been so. Uh, like little businesses, even when yeah. she was little. It's <laughs> she'd really, make bracelets or something. It's just really cool because she called and texted me the other day and said, Grandma, I'm such a boss girl. I applied for some jobs in San Diego. I have three interviews on Zoom next week. She got all three jobs. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's yeah. wonderful. One was right on in the Zoom. They hired her right there. So um, she took the two ones, the two 15 hour a week jobs, so that the other one was more full time. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. Right. So it's kind of cool to see that there are kids out there. And we all have kids out there. You're, you yeah. know, everybody's kids are doing well. And it is possible for them to make it in this world. That's right. Well, we all did, right? Um, oh. I haven't decided if I have yet. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. okay. Jury's still out. <laughs> okay, well, let's read the next few verses. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion. May you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. So time has now moved on in this, this family's life, and the next generation is born. Grandchildren are another blessing God yes, gives us. Right? This is a time in your family life when you get to play with the kids, spoil them, and send them back home. Yes. Sugar them up and give them back to yes. mom and dad, right? Exactly. <laughs> I do that on a daily basis. <laughs> And hopefully, and hopefully, you know, you don't have to worry about the daily needs. Now, there are some families where the grandparents are still worrying about the kids' daily, you know, the little kids' get daily needs. But, you know, hopefully, you know, for this man, he's seeing the blessings of what, what has gone on in his family. That next generation has come, and he's getting to sit there and enjoy it. It's the fruit, right? Enjoying his fruit. But there's another blessing mentioned in verse 5. It says, Bless you out of Zion and the good of Jerusalem. God has good or blessings for his people that come out of Zion or Jerusalem. Kind of a little, almost, almost a switch of subject, but not quite. 
So can you name a blessing that came out of Jerusalem? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. That's... I gave you an easy one, see? So number one blessing for Israelites and Christians that came was the Messiah, or Jesus, and his teachings. We get the blessings of his teachings, right? And the provision of salvation he gave. So out of Zion, or out of Jerusalem, not only did this family that's being talked about in this psalm, but we, we have these blessings that came out of Zion, out of Jerusalem. Yeah. Well, there'll be a test later, so if you put them in the wrong spot. <laughs> right? You know, I was like, through the week as I'm reading back over, I'll be like, that don't make sense. <laughs> And then you just say that, Kathy. What did yeah, she do? She told she, it's Kathy's it's fault. Me putting it in the wrong area. <laughs> so for those who fear the Lord, it is also a blessing to see the good of Jerusalem, specifically and in general, the good of any community or nation in which we live. So we want to see the blessings for Jerusalem, but don't we want to see the blessings for our own nation? You know, come in our life as we... As we live with our families, we want to see our own community. We'd like to see Kalinga doing well okay. and the blessings of God upon it. You know, because maybe we have a lot of good Christian families that are raising large families here. Kim's family's a testament to that. And <laughs> she's doing her part. See? Kim's doing her part. Good job, Kim. Good job. <laughs> so, what has been the focus of Psalm 127, 128? Here's your big quiz. What's the big focus of these two psalms? Blessings and uh, children. Yeah, children and the families and the blessing God gives, right? And the adults, um, e even though they may have, maybe now you're at the grandchild phase of life, there's a blessing for you teaching your grandchildren about God or helping your kids teach your grandchildren, right? So don't think your job is done just because you've, you're now older now, and maybe you know you don't have that responsibility of kids in your home, but you do. You have grandchildren around or kids you know. So we want to teach that next generation, even if they aren't living with us. We want to help them experience God's blessings too, teach them to fear the Lord. So and as a result, if we can get more families knowing the Lord, more stronger in the Lord, because there can be a lot of people who know Jesus, but they're not walking the walk. They're not strong in the Lord, right? If we can do that, a strong, healthy, and godly family is the strength of any city or nation. It's kind of what the end of Psalm 128 is saying. So with a strong, godly nation, we add the roof of protection over our home and family. When our nation or our city is doing well or our state is doing well, doesn't that add protection over you? Right? I mean, think about the nations that are having issues, a lot of issues. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you capitalize godly? Because I don't think godly has to be capitalized. It could be any god, though. No, it's not well, capitalized. I think in general in writing, though, godly can be lowercase. But that's, it's okay, capitalize it. Feel free. <laughs> I do always, but I just, I was just curious what you think. I, I thought, in my understanding, it didn't have to be in this use. But, you know, I'm no expert. I'm going to leave that to Carolyn. Because I trained her well. That's what happens when you work the room. because you sat on the It's your alone. blessing. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're, you're <laughs> blessing the entire room. I think you're, I'll, you're our scapegoat. You know, I need to pick on Ruthie next. <laughs> She's just I way too so. quiet and She's zoning out on her 7-Up over there. I need caffeine. <laughs> she needs caffeine. So, 7-Up doesn't have any, does it? No. So, the way, so the way this psalm is ending, you know, not only we raised our children and our grandchildren, if we want to see our cities and our nations strong, right, and blessed, it starts with us teaching the children, whether they're in our house or not. So we want to teach them God's word, God's truth. We want to get them saved, right? Amen. 
and raise them up to be strong and secure. And that's why I love this year's VBS, is the for our VBS here, is the emphasis on standing on God's truth, standing on the rock, teaching the kids to stand on the truth. Because, boy, they're going through the battles even at little ages now. Little ages. I mean, I mean, Carolyn was a kid. <laughs> Our, one of our biggest dilemmas was only finding Madonna-style clothing in the store for a five-year-old. Oh, <laughs> and I thought that was rough. <laughs> Nothing compared to what's going on oh, now, right? Oh, right? Carolyn, our little Madonna, no. <laughs> She's like, what did I do? She's like, I don't even know what Madonna's on, right? <laughs> but I tried to find her other clothes, so I dug into mine from when I was a child and made her wear that. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and bloomers. Right. <laughs> I wore a lot of funky clothes, that's for sure. So, yeah, she did. She was wearing 70s clothes, and Gregory did too. I, I got some good pictures. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to shop out there. It is for girls. Yeah, I want to know where the rest of the girls' shirts are. I go shopping oh. for Kaylee, and I'm like, where's the rest yeah. of it? Yeah. yeah. They don't yeah. even. They're all going to be crew cut. Yeah. They don't even make them. And Eric is for Quinn, you know, he just throws a fit. She has to wear uh, a shirt underneath the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I tell Kaylee to go like this. If I can see your belly, you're not you're, you're not, not buying it. Yeah, that's how you just wrap duct tape. Wrap <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> then she can't lift the shirt or arms or anything. So how does Psalm how does Psalm end in verses set verse six? It says, Peace be upon Israel. Right? So we should desire and seek peace for Israel. Yeah. It's not just for the Hebrews. We need to seek, we need to, you know, God loved them and we should love them too. Mm -hmm. You may not always agree with everything they do, but you need to love them like he did. And we need to pray for God's roof of protection over them as well. Okay? So. I have some bad news, or maybe good news, depending on how you look at this. <laughs> For some of you, you just may be jumping up and down with joy. Others of you <laughs> may be crying. So due to Memorial Day, <laughs> then VBS. What? Yeah, because it's the timing of VBS. Well, first we got hit with Memorial Day. Yeah, because I'm also going away for my 40th anniversary at the end, right after VBS. So, I'm sorry. It's just the way it worked out. There was only like one week in there where we could do it, but I think I'm going to be too tired. <laughs> we're going to go to where we were married, Yosemite. And our anniversary actually falls on a Sunday. So we get to go to Yosemite Chapel where we were married. And sit in church on Sunday. So that's our goal. So who's going to be preaching that day? Uh, our DOM, DOM, our Director of Missions from Fresno is coming. Okay. He's been here before. Yeah, yeah, he's been here before. So I have another question as well. So when we come back in July, um, I wanted to know, I said I wouldn't do it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to ask, in case you're interested, would you want me to do the 23rd Psalm study over again? It's been three years since we did it. And I don't know how many of you were here when we did it. I wasn't here. I wasn't here. I didn't get my notes. It's when three I years ago. When we first started coming to the church, was you that, guys were doing is that, Psalms 23. So yes. see, it's been three years. Yeah. So. And I didn't participate, but. It's up to you. I know, like, Claudia was probably here during that, but, and yeah. Debbie was, I think. It was a really rich study. Matter of fact, I just got through the other day sharing one of the things that we learned about the cup being full. Uh huh. And uh, with somebody, and they were like, oh, really? I... So, I don't know. I, do you want to do it again? You can't outstudy God's Word. It's I mean, I liked the study. I didn't know if we wanted to come back in July and do it. Now, the 23rd Psalm. Took us 15 weeks. It was a good study, very rich. Um, you wouldn't think so. It's only six verses, but there was so much stuff in it. it. Took us 15 weeks. What do you think? Yes, no. I loved that study. I wouldn't mind doing it again. It won't bother you that it's a repeat. 
Okay, well then, that's what I'm praying about, and I'm thinking that maybe that's what we'll come back and do if you're all okay with that. I don't want to make you feel like we're doing a repeat and you're bored to death. So, if most of you haven't done it, and it's okay, then maybe we'll come back and do that in July. Okay?